we're here to talk about the thoughtful home. But what is a thoughtful home? What does this mean? What is a thoughtful home? Well, you know, a thoughtful home is not just about the people inside it, but it's about the products or with the way we think about it, the products inside it. And so long and so for so many years, um, you know, I've been living since I was a kid with basically the same infrastructure products. You know, we've seen things like uh, it being the same for, uh, for, for decades. But I've seen so much massive change in, you know, in televisions, in, in connectivity, in telephony, in the home. But many of the other things in our house haven't changed. And so what we've done because of the, the processing and the, 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 the cost reductions that smartphones have brought to the world in, in terms of connectivity as well as uh, compute power, we're able to then instill these different objects inside of our home with that power to then make them connected and hopefully reinvent them in a new way. So for us, we've, you know, we created the Nest Learning Thermostat. Um, and now through that, and we're in many countries in the world now, um, we've been able to help people save energy individually and also collectively. Uh, somewhere around 4 billion kilowatt hours have already been saved. And that's, a, that's equivalent to over 30 minutes of the entire U.S. energy consumption, right? And we saved it and people are still living comfortably. You know, when we want to talk about energy efficiency, we don't have to go live in a cave. Right. We can go and you know, use products that actually make it easy to save energy with, while still keeping us comfortable. I mean, people have been talking about the connected home for quite a while. I've attended many conferences where I've seen talking refrigerators yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but how do you make the kind of interaction between consumers and actual human beings and these devices in the home meaningful in, in some way? How are you doing it at Nest? Well, you know, we were pitched, I remember growing up, we always pitched that Jetsons world, you know, the, the home of the future. And it came every decade. There was a new home of the future. And it was always these things were going to be connected. And they were all going to talk to each other. What we did very simply was, instead of trying to think about reinventing every single product in your home at once and saying you need to adopt this whole new way of living, we just said, let's go product by product. Let's rethink that product in a smartphone-enabled world. And hopefully, you'll enjoy that one. And then over time, if you buy enough of the different products, that they don't always have to be from us, they can start to work together in a thoughtful way. So in the case of our thermostat um, if, and, our, and, our, and our smoke and CO detector, if a CO alarm goes off in the home, it will automatically turn down and turn off your boiler. Why? Because the, usually the number one case in a home for CO leakage is the boiler. So it's simply, if you just have those two products on the network, they talk to each other, and they, they start to, to work together in, in ways that you don't have to program. Before, it, was, it took a lot of, of technical ability to make simple things work. But why start with a thermostat and a smoke alarm? <laughs> uh, if, if all the things that we need to solve in the home, why? Why go there? I mean, you've worked on the iPod and the iPhone, and they're judged as some of the sexiest products ever created. Yeah. Why start with these things? Well, th that's what my wife, uh, my wife said. She goes, what? The iPod guy making thermostats? <laughs> Makes no freaking sense. But, but really, if you think about it, when, when, we were, uh, you know, when I got married and we had kids, I started thinking about the future. And I started thinking about energy efficiency and about the environment. I was like, and we started building a home, and it was heating and cooling was over 50% of an energy bill. And I said, these products that control them today, they're horrible, they're ugly looking, they're hard to use, and they just suck the money out of our wallets. And I was like, why is this? And so we went back and reinvented it just for, to, to make it better, not just you know, more stylish on your wall because you, you're always concerned about the things you put in your home, right? You care about the, the furniture, the wall coverings. Well, you should have things that you admire and like on your wall, in, including the things that control energy, right? So make it attractive. So that was the first thing. Help the environment and also help your pocket at the same time. We thought it was a win-win-win. And uh, we won, you know, in terms of you know, winning over a, a at least the first set of consumers for, for the Nest thermostat. Yeah, I like the way that the thermostat in your world has turned from something that you hide away on a wall to actually you can put on your mantelpiece now and become exactly. a Exactly. You know, it's a, a whole, we hope it's artwork. And the same thing goes for, for safety. Why a smoke detector? Safety. P 
people die every year because of CO poisonings and, and smoke alarms because they don't like them. They beep or they just don't put them in at all because they're, they're annoying. Hmm. So we decided to make something that's beautiful and gives you information and, and connects to other products to help you live a safer life. And uh, it's working. We, we, the number of emails we get every week by it saved my family or it saved our property. It's, it's really rewarding for not just me, but for the team. Teddy, you're a bit of a rare creature in these rare surroundings that we've got in, in that you have the Apple genome. You know, you've spent a lot of time at that company, focused on design, worked under Steve Jobs, and it's, tell us about how your experience at Apple helped you build Nest, but also how that experience is now feeding into what you're doing at Google. So, for me, you know, I've, I grew up on Apple, Apple II and all those things. So I went, my very first job was actually working with the design, with the team that designed the first Macintosh at a, uh, without Steve, but we, we designed a, a personal uh, mobile device. And so that was great. And I learned a lot about how to design products. And I heard about all the stories about how Apple did what it did. But then actually going to work at Apple, um, knowing about product design, what I really learned was experience design and understanding every consumer touch point, whether it was at e-commerce or in retail, understanding um, how that, the message in the marketing then communicated the values to the uh, individual customers of what it did, how customer support worked. All of the different customer touch points had to be, had to be designed, not just the product. That's the thing that was the big takeaway for me of, of learnings. And, you know, something we brought to Nest, right? We, we managed all of those touch points. And then again, now at Google, we're doing the same thing um, as Nest and, and, uh, and various teams at Google actually come and talk to us all the time. How do you do what you do? And we also talk to them about what they do as well and, and learn from each other. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, learning through osmosis inside the organization for, for, for our skill sets as well as their skill sets. So it's been a really nice, you know, year and four months so far. Uh, what Google's known for is this kind of data-driven approach. Spend a lot of time uh, doing the analytics to inform them how to build products. You come from a very different worldview. I mean, Steve Jobs and yourself and, and people at Apple all say that the consumer doesn't really know what they want until they see it. Um, so how are you squaring that particular circle? <laughs> So when you make something new, you can't get data on it. You can't talk to consumers and say, you know, tell us what you want or make a model and say, how would it work in your life? Would you want this? But after you actually make the first product and you use all of the, your, you know, your intuition as well as your, you know, your experience to make that product, then you can put it in uh, consumers' homes or when consumers buy it. Then you can use analytics. Then you can ask questions to that consumer and get powerful insights through that data to help you design the next, pro the next version of that product. So for us, there are certain times when you have to do intuition and, and, and experience-based design, and then there's other times to get insights through data to help you do the next version. So we have some amazing and powerful tool sets uh, inside the company that allow us to extract these insights from the data to help us make the products better. So it's been a really, really nice blend of, of the two. And what are those insights? So give us some of the insights that you're learning now as, as Nest grows and more people are using them. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at a, a affinity for the product in terms of you know, usage. So think about there are different types of homes. There are different types of uh, families inside those homes. There could be um, you know, uh, single, uh, uh, how can I say, senior citizens you know, living in the homes, or it's uh, a family with young children, or empty nesters, or roommates. And what we can do is we can get the data that we collect from the different products and understand those real interesting uh, differences between homes. And then we're actually to be able to tweak the algorithms necessary to make sure we have a better learning algorithm for room, roommates versus uh, you know, empty nesters versus these young families. So, uh, and we need those tools to be able to extract those insights. It's been really, 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 really wonderful. And we'll hear from Demis, uh, from DeepMind about the things that he's doing and that we're actually applying to our stuff as well. It sounds like um, you, uh, you've been at Google for an awful long time, actually. But well, the first time I, I spoke to you, we had a 15-minute uh, conversation just about a tiny screw that you 
put into the original thermostat and why it was important that it was this shape and size and how much time and focus that you, uh, you had to do or just to make sure that that was right. Does this mean that you've had to change a little bit of your way of working, your process, to incorporate, incorporate yourself into the kind of Google way of life? Uh, no, we have, I haven't changed my, my I think we have a, a much larger team and we have even more experienced designers around, uh, or around the, the, the company to help enable uh, you know, even more thoughtful designs. But it's still at the end of the day, I'm still the editor, I'm still going through the details, I'm going why are we doing it this way, looking at the websites, looking at the packaging, all of those details and luckily now we have a larger team so I can spend more and more time with the, the, working on product and not worrying about financing and not worrying about all the legal issues and HR issues and those things. So it, that was the big thing that the reason why we did it was the fact that just before the acquisition, I was probably spending 90% of my time on all infrastructure instead of product. Now it's flipped. 90% of the time on products and services and 10% on worrying about the overall business and the, uh, the infrastructure needs. So it's been really, really a wonderful combination. We've got a limited amount of time, so I will open the floor to uh, questions very shortly. But just one last question. We're, we're in Europe. Yep. Uh, you're over here. What's, it, what's exciting to you over here? Is there anything that you're looking at and uh, being particularly uh, attracted to? Well, right now, you know, bringing Nest to all the different homes in, in different countries, it's been mind-boggling how different homes and how people live in just different countries, just, you know, kilometers away across borders. So that's been interesting. But the other one is just the startup cultures. There's so many startups now than be ever before. I, I lived in Paris, you know, uh, five years ago, just before starting Nest with our family. And there was a very small, very nascent startup scene. Now today, the incoming of new, uh, new startups has just been tremendous, not just in, uh, you know, in home space, but all across the minds, algorithms, uh, music services that we've seen, all kinds of things. And so it's really invigorating to be here and see that. It's kind of Silicon Valley light being created here. All right. Thanks very right. much, Tony. Thank you.